So I just want to continue uh, with what I was saying. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't had a chance to listen to the last video. If I was cut off or not. But this is really important um, that I want you to understand. It was because of the Catholic Church wanting power, wanting eunuchs to be called male so that they could prosecute them for sodomy. So they could get rid of them because they were rivals of them. All right. And the Catholic Church leaders began using their new influence over the Roman imperial law now that they had the ear of the rulers, okay, to recategorize natural eunuchs as males in order to prosecute them as perpetrators of sodomy against their own bodies. Here they had for over 1,500 years, you know, had sex, had partners, were able to adopt, made wills, were parts of family lives, had natural sex with uh, same-sex partners, male or female, and now they're going to be recategorized, you know, by these few men, okay? Then in the ninth century, the natural unit category was retired altogether as a legal concept. So you wonder why we lost that term in the first place from the west, uh, for, sorry, from the east to the west. Okay, because it's still used in some eastern parts of the world. They, you know, in the in the Hebrew, they were known as Saris, uh, Unicocus in the Greek, uh, Arsnakokai in the Greek, uh, other terms as well, depending upon who they were and what they were, and you know, if they were natural eunuchs or castrated or what have you. So it was retired altogether as a legal concept. And even in the Muslim world, they have their own um, Sharia law and, and so forth. And they, and they have their history about what happened with the eunuch. And again, you can read this in the thesis papers that I showed you earlier in um, the uh, first four uh, of the series of this documentary. documentary. And I just wanted to show you some, you know, ancient eunuchs um, back in the Roman day. There's some depictions, some pictures here. So um, I just thought that you would get an, an idea, you know, of what, who these, you know, these pictures were and what they looked like, what how they were depicted back then, what they dressed, what they looked like. Okay. Um, I mean, I mean, look at this person. <laughs> and I, I believe that this is also a depiction again of the Ethiopian eunuch with uh, Philip and Ethiopian, Ethiopian eunuch who must have been also a Jew as well because he went all the way from Ethiopia to the, the Jewish temple to, to worship and then was turned away probably because he did have crushed testicles. But again, the term was an umbrella term for, for everyone. And uh, so these are just some pictures here. We also we have, of course, I, I haven't gone into this, uh, into the Orient uh, eunuch, but they also had their rich history as well. Yeah, that's the same picture. Uh, again. These are pictures that, that, that you can look up. Now, these were obviously lesbians, okay? Not sure who that is. And of course, the minstrel singers, Almas, if you will. Um, 
Just looking for some more pictures here for you. Great. Now, you know, this is, this is, you, at first glance, you might think it's a woman, but it's not. It's a male. Okay. And um, so let me just continue reading here. Um, so I'm not going to go into the, to the, Muslims who also condemn homosexuality, my goodness, they're throwing gay people off buildings in, in Syria in front of little children and, and, and people, okay? They're throwing them headfirst off of buildings if they even suspect that you're gay or homosexual. So, you know, some of the reasons now uh, that some people now accuse exclusively homosexual men of being sodomites is that over time, the ancient evil distinction between types of men based on the presence or absence of the heterosexual arousal in them has been deliberately erased by the patriarchal, patriarchal religious leaders, Catholic Church, okay, Nicene Council and others. The erasers they actually began with the emergence of the Greek moral philosophy that, that reached a critical turning point in the writings of the Fathers of the Church. And you can read about that too. St. Augustine, the Council of Nicaea, who claimed to, uh, were claiming to, to emulate a heterosexual abstinence role model, Jesus at the time, when absolute abstinence from heterosexuality traditionally implies queerness as well as spiritual holiness. All right. So in order to lay claim to the holiness of the abstinence while escaping the queerness of it, the church leaders declared the greater virtue of their strong, manly abstinence based on willpower. It's willpower. No, it's not. It's a gift. Okay. As opposed to the See, they didn't even know what they were talking about. Uh, <laughs> abstinence of holy eunuchs based on their natural inclination. Okay, so based on the willpower as opposed to the abstinence of holy eunuchs based on their natural inclination. Probably the greatest incentive for criminalizing eunuch sexual sexuality was the power that eunuchs herald and the protection uh, that afforded to imperial rulers whom they surrounded as an isolating buffer. The religious leaders and scholars used their influence to promote the view of maleness as an anatomical characteristic alone, and they restricted the meaning of the term eunuch, whether born or man-made, to those who lack reproductive organs. Once redefined as males, exclusive intimate homosexuals became fair game for the prosecution as sodomites. Fair game. They're fair game now. Boy, we got them now. Because they were subjecting their male bodies to sexual penetration. So to sum up three of these thesis papers, basically, from what I've read. Because of the early church fathers, the Nicene Council, the Clement of Alexandria, as well as the Catholic Church, the Roman emperors of the time who lend their ear to these people, the position of the natural-born eunuch was 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 the uh, was the fact that the Catholic Church was envious of the position of the natural born eunuch. That's that's it. They were rivals. They wanted the power that they had and that they wielded. They wanted the ear of the pharaohs and kings, and they wanted to be in position. They wanted to replace them, get rid of them, kill them, put them away, get rid of the term altogether. And that's why we lost the term. That's why we don't know it today in today's churches. So we're not familiar. Because they wanted the power. They wanted what the natural eunuchs wielded because of the positions that they held. Conspired against the people, these people, these natural eunuchs. And, and you know, place a holy common condemnation judgment upon 10% of the population for more than 2,000 years. They've been doing it, and they're still doing it today. You know, still doing it today to people. Some more pictures of castration. That's not very pretty. 
um, today's the others. There's other names for them. I can't think about the top of my head uh, that they have for them. But they're still ridiculed today, you know, they're still seen as less than when, you know, for 1,500 years they were not less than. They're cons they were considered spiritual, even. <laughs> These two guys. <laughs> Give me that. No, I want it. <laughs> oh, man. Sure, what this is kind of neat to be able to see this. You know, it, it, the names have changed today in some of the areas, anyway. It's kind of neat to see some of the old maps. Gaza is still there, Jericho, Jerusalem. Um, I don't know what this is, but I don't know. And you have the, the uh, Chinese eunuchs, too. They, they had eunuchs as well. Um, I'll go on to keep reading. Um, Fifteen hundred years they, they enjoyed a hard-fought title of natural-born eunuch. Okay, hard-fought. Luke 24, verse 44, Jesus said, Everything that is written of him in the law of Moses, prophets, the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Until the full and gathering of the church is done, where natural-born eunuchs today, the LGBTQ community is allowed to offer up their offerings and tithings to God on God's altar, then things that Jesus said cannot come to pass cannot be fulfilled. You know, think, you know Satan's trying really hard. He's... You know, it's like Tony said, uh, that was the, this was a good example. It, it, Satan offers you up two, two solutions. You know, it's either Coke or Pepsi. You know, which is better? Which has the better taste? You know, which is more popular, Coke or Pepsi? When both of them are bad for you and cause diabetes and other diseases. You know, they're both bad for you. And that's what Satan does. Okay? Pits. Gives you, gives you, you know, a choice and, and says it's either this or that. And that's what today's politicians do, too. It's either Republicans or Democrats when they're both on the same side, you know. Um, you know, granted, all things are possible under God in heaven and earth. As Jesus said, everything that's written about him in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms has to be fulfilled. So, well, you know, my Christian brothers and sisters, whether or not you agree what a natural eunuch is or is not, it's, it's irrelevant. It's, it's not important. It doesn't matter. Irrelevant. And Isaiah 56, verse 8, explains why God is apparently lifting the ban on the eunuch in the congregation. Uh, if you look at Brian Bowen Ministries, he's actually leaving it in effect for the Jews under the Old Covenant, but he lifted it for the New Covenant for the Christians. And he's including the LGBT and the natural eunuch, the eunuchs under the New Covenant, so that he can gather others with Israel besides those already gathered. It's commonly known as the ingathering, Isaiah 56, 8, of the Gentiles. And Romans 11, verse 25, he prophesies, Paul prophesies, Lest you be self-opinionated, full of conceit, I don't want you to miss the hidden truth and the mystery, brethren. A hardening insensible has temporarily befalled a part of Israel to last until the full number of the ingathering of the Gentiles comes in. That includes the homosexual community. We as Christians are from us encourage each other that the Lord will come himself to send upon from heaven with a loud cry and the trumpets will blare and the whole world will hear his coming in the air and the dead in Christ shall rise first and those who are left here on earth will be caught up with him in the air. This is called the rapture or the harpazo. That means it's a Greek term for the rapture. But until all things that are written about Jesus have been fulfilled and that includes allowing gaze into the church.